Time code synchronization is a really cool tool when you are working with multiple cameras and audio recorders. However, how do you actually do the time code synchronization on your computer? That is exactly what I am going to talk about in this video today. Now, if you're wondering what is time code and what is it actually for, why would you even use it, then I have a video linked for you up here in the corner or in the description down below. Actually, I have a full playlist of videos around the topic of time code synchronization, as well as devices like the Tentacle Sync E or the Track E audio recorder, which are all time code enabled. These videos cover how to basically use time code with just about any camera, how you can actually achieve time code synchronization with just one device and a cable bound solution between your one device and another. Now for the synchronization on your computer, there are special programs that are only made for time code synchronization, but you can also do that with, for example, DaVinci Resolve, which I'm going to talk about in this video. So let's go onto the screen and talk about DaVinci Resolve, how you can achieve time code synchronization there and work with it. Now what I have here on the screen is actually a folder of files that I recorded with my audio recorder and also different cameras. Two Canon EOS R, which both had a Tentacle Sync connected to them. And one of them was recorded into the Atomus Ninja V, the other one to an internal SD card. And I was also using my phone, which has the Rec app on it, which also is compatible with the Tentacle Sync lineup. So now we have this folder and in these Canon files here, we have the audio time code. And then on the other ones, we actually have the time code in the metadata. Now with DaVinci Resolve, it actually is really easy to do the time code synchronization and you don't even need to use a program like the Tentacle Sync Studio software. You can simply drag and drop these files into your media library. Right here now, you can see we have all of them right here. I have activated the detail view here so that I have more information about these things. And now we have actual timecode information already written in these files. However, these timecodes right here are not exactly correct, let's say. And I know that they actually contain the audio timecode because when I play this back, you will actually hear a kind of like a wee sound. And that's how time code sounds when you record it to an audio channel. But with DaVinci Resolve, we can actually update the time code that is from the metadata based on the audio time code by simply selecting the tracks that have time code in audio, right clicking and going to update time code from audio track. And as soon as I say that, or as soon as I do that, we can just do that right here so we can actually see the updating start timecode. So right now we have the EOS R1 track with a timecode start at 23.30.15 and I hit update and there you can see now these timecodes are instantaneously updated based on the timecode that is stored in the audio file or in the audio track. Of course, we also might want to detect which clips are from the same camera and use a metadata set. Now, if you're using DSLR and mirrorless cameras, these tags can't really be set inside of the device. There aren't really many settings for that. There are cameras more in the cinema lineup that allow for these types of settings to be set. However, if you can't do it inside of your camera, you can actually just achieve this with the metadata editing right here in DaVinci Resolve. Now to make this adjustment, we just select the clips that we want to edit and then we go to the metadata clip or the metadata panel right here, go to this little down arrow and there we can say shot and scene. And right here, we actually have the camera ID or camera number. We can also use something like angle and some other things. This is up to you to choose from, but I'm gonna go with the camera ID or camera number and put a C2 for camera two right here. Then with this single clip, we're going to go with C1. Then we have the iPhone clips, which are all from the same iPhone. So C3 for this. And then we have audio recorders and we have three in total. So we have the Leia and we are going to go with da, 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 camera ID and we go with A1. And then we have the other one, A2. And then we have the last one and call that A3. 
And now, since we have all of them assigned, we can right click on all of them, create new multicam sequence, call this just a multicam 24 frames per second. We want to use the time code. We want to have them sequential based on metadata camera, detect the same cameras based on the camera number and move source clips to original clips bin. That can be activated. In this case, it might make sense. And now we can hit create. And with that, we have a original clips bin and there are all these data in there. And then we have the multi-cam clip. And as you can see right there, as I move through this, there are the different cameras visible on the screen. Now, if you want to make edits in there, you can right click this and go open in timeline. And with that, you will actually simply see the whole timeline with all of the data right there on the tracks. And so now you can actually just go ahead and work with these. You can remove certain audio tracks that you might not need, especially the ones from the cameras, for example. If you hold Alt selected whilst you are selecting these clips, they're also not combined with the video track. So you can actually just remove those, for example, and also remove this one. And now you have just the audio tracks from the audio recorders and the video clips from the cameras and they're all nice and aligned based on the metadata or the time code information that is stored in the audio track as well as the metadata there. So this is how you can align things based on time code information in the files. And it doesn't matter if it's audio time code or metadata time code. So that's really, really cool that this is built into this program for free and you don't have to install any other programs if you are a user of DaVinci Resolve. Now, I also will have a video covering the same process for Premiere Pro. However, I might have to reference this video from the Premiere Pro side because the reading of the audio time track or the audio time code is actually not something that is currently supported in Premiere Pro. So with DaVinci Resolve, if you're a native user there, you have an edge over Premiere Pro there. Now, if you have any questions about this topic, you can leave those in the comment section down below. If this video was helpful for you, I would appreciate a thumbs up and I hope to see you in one of the upcoming videos. Ciao, ciao.